I'm going to Taraboa, and Taraboa is where we see the mirage. You know, uh, it is like the water is in the in desert, but there is not. And we make some nice pictures in uh, Taraboa before going to uh, Esparagos. Esparagos is the capital of the uh, Sal Island, where we find all the um, all the Pokemon and welcome to our channel we and Anna and Edward or two curly heads wondering this is the second part of our full day tour of Sal Island the first stop of this episode was in Terra Boa a desertic location where you can experience the mirage effect known as Fata Morgana as well if you never witnessed this before well it's a fascinating experience and there are some remarkable legends and observations the Flying Dutchman, according to folklore, is a ghost ship that can never go home and it's doomed to sail the seven seas forever. The Flying Dutchman is usually spotted from afar, sometimes seen to be glowing with ghosty light. One of the possible explanations of this origin of the Flying Dutchman legend is Fata Morgana Mirage scene at sea. In reality, the explanation for this phenomenon is that mirages are created when light passes throughout air of different temperatures, and since the dawn of time many people have been questioning their sanity due to this mirage effect, but it's truly fascinating to witness it. Our second stop was in Espargo, the capital of the island if you wish. The government just did a genius thing. They uh, built uh, houses for them which is called, in a project called Casa para Todos, yeah. which means house for, for all. Everyone, yeah. Yeah. So, a one of us will find those apartments that was uh, destined to the families that lives here. All those were destined to the yeah. families that lives here. All this place was full of tents. Yeah. Right now, we don't have that much, uh, that big amount of tents. It is uh, diminishing, but Look over there. Oh, this, yes, those yeah. buildings were built for people that live in this yeah. condition. And this is a global project. It's just all the island of Cape Verde. Uh, and uh, some of those buildings, uh, it is as not yet been uh, filled with the families. So in the beginning of 2004, uh, 2004, uh, 2004 uh, people that live here with them, they yeah, have yeah. a as well, you know. And we will go to uh, the apartments that has been get given to the family and you will see uh, this reality, okay? It's good that they are trying to help them out. Yeah, of course. It is not good. It is excellent. Yes, yes. Yeah. In Santiago uh, Island, for example, the project is so big and uh, all the families are being so, you know. On our way to the city, Alex has explained a little bit about the situation of the island and the country in general when it comes to the less fortunate families that are and have lived in this improvised and unsanitary dwelling. We have admired some grey graffiti walls and I must admit they have a lot of talented artists and a great sense of colors. You will not see too many grey and dull buildings here and that's for sure. After enjoying the street art, we headed then to our host, a lovely lady with a very warm and friendly smile, Mama Esther. 
she is a great example that you can change your life if you're willing to take your chance and work until you achieve your goals. She used to live in those improvised barracks, but she managed to build up her own business and raise and educate four children, all of them being engineers now. We had our lunch at her house. The food was amazing and to be honest, she reminded me of my grandmother. The same smile, the same happiness in her eyes when the house and the table is full and we all enjoy her food. It was a great experience and not all the tour companies are providing this kind of personal encounter with the locals. For Cape Verdans, it's really important that us, the tourists, we are promoting and supporting the local community and businesses because the vast majority of the touristic activities and leisures are dominated by the big foreign companies. Frozen hand, how did he say? Cabeza frio. Cabeza frio. You want to get cabeza frio, make it with ski. Cabeza frio, yeah. Yeah, if you have, you have like head, headache. Okay, this is, uh, this you know. Uh, banana tree. Really? Yeah, I thought banana. that is taller a little bit, no? No.
After we have stuffed ourselves with all that delicious food and all that natural drinks, we have continued our tour. And we were getting really excited because we were about to do something new, something that we haven't experienced before. We were on our way to swim with the sharks at a place called the Shark Bay. Shark Bay, it's a natural habitat situated in the northeast part of the island on the beach with a natural lemon shark rookery, which is a light brown color shark or sand colored when it is in its natural environment. Cape Verde is home to over 60 shark and ray species, including whale sharks, tiger sharks and manta rays. But the only ones that you can swim with are the lemon sharks. And this shark is a medium to large shark and is not a threat to people, but can be a danger to other ocean animals. And this is a top attraction in Cape Verde. Our next stop was Salinas de Pedra de Lume. It's a unique and fascinating attraction located on the island of Sal in Cape Verde. The site consists of natural salt ponds that were created by volcanic activity. The water in these ponds evaporates, leaving behind salt deposits. The entrance to visit this place will be 5 euros per person. So guys, we are at the salt extraction place and the guy, he just told us that this one now is just mainly for the tourists and not salt that they are, for example, producing for export or for internal use. But this place is so cool and um, <coughs> we are going to go inside the water, the salty water and the guy just said that you shouldn't stay inside more than 25 minutes maximum obviously because the water is so salty that is going to damage your skin so yeah I have some uh, wounds on my body and I think it's going to be very painful but I will still try it but this place looks really cool and with these devices, wood devices, they were really successful, I think. Oh, the colors are so beautiful, if you can see the pinkish. <coughs> the pinkish in the water. If you decide to go inside the water, afterwards you have the options to have a fresh shower that will cost 1 euro per person.
One of the unique aspects of Salinas de Pedra de Lume is that the soil concentration in the ponds is so high that visitors can easily float on the surface of the water. It's similar to the experience in the Dead Sea. And with this, we have come to the end of our Sal Island tour. Okay, hello guys! I had just a great time with Edward and Anna and I wanted to tell you to come to Cape Verde, okay? It is safe here, it is great. I am sure you're gonna love it, okay? Thank you for watching and if you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel. See you next time. Take care.